Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another video. I wanted to um, talk about some observations that I've made since coming to the UAE and actually, you know, being someone who has uh, a lot of permission of Allah make Hydra here and stay here for the remaining remainder of my years and that is um, Muslim identity strengthening the Muslim identity right so what I noticed of course coming from the West and being a sub culture um, I'm a subculture twice, actually, uh, coming from the United States, being, one being, yeah, being, a, being an African American, and, um, also being a Muslim in the United States, I have a double subculture. Um, and what I notice is here in a Muslim country, you see images of yourself, those of your likeness, things that are people who are similar to you depicted on the screen as well as in advertisements, on billboards, everywhere. And every person, um, who is not depicted in their own image, in their societies. They don't see people who are in power, in positions of influence that don't look like them. It affects you psychologically. It, and, and in addition to that, the culture that you're living in, it doesn't allow you to be yourself, okay? The Western culture mandates that you comply, you compromise, and you wipe away your identity. That's just what it is. So everyone who is um, basically Muslim, if you are a white Muslim, a Caucasian, and you have accepted Islam, then you you have a subculture as well, but uh, you know, yeah, it's also going to affect you psychologically because you don't see images of of Muslims depicted. So, I mean, you know, I can't really talk about the white experience. A white person, a white Muslim, would have to if they even you know reflected on this idea, they would have to get you know explain what they feel and effects that they have uh, from being in a um, society that basically doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't coexist with your reality pretty much. So anyways, it doesn't, it doesn't support your reality. So yeah, what I notice is that your identity becomes strengthened if you see yourself a part of the Muslim world at large and not a Westerner first. Your identity becomes strengthened just like when the Sahaba, عنهم, they made Hijrah from Mecca to Al Medina and they became stronger. Their forces became stronger. Their knowledge became stronger and more. Um, they were able to participate in the jihad. Well, jihad was legislated at that time when that was impossible to fight when you're under the thumb or the rule and authority of people who are indifferent to you or who are persecuting you. So even though we're not being persecuted in the West, there are subtle 
other subtle onslaughts, uh, of course, some subtle, some not so subtle, that remind you that um, what you're doing in your way of life is menial. It's a joke. It's, it's, it doesn't coincide with our values in the mainstream society. So you can have your little corner and do your little practice and have your little beliefs, but as long as it doesn't infringe, it's not making serious grounds and in in, in impact in the society, then, you know, go ahead and have your little cute little religious uh, practices and rituals or whatever you want to do. That's basically the message of the West. As long as you don't infringe upon them, then you'll be fine. They won't make any noise. But if it starts gaining traction, then you already see what happens. Those of you who are living there, you see, you see what happens. So coming to the, the Muslim countries, it helps you in so many ways. It helps. Okay, so coming to a Muslim country helps to reinforce your identity. Uh, an identity that you didn't think you needed reinforcement of. You know, you grow up, you're, you know, grow up in whatever country you grew up in as far as a Western country, and, you know, you're allowed to practice your religion, and you don't realize the onslaught of your identity is literally muted, you're erased. And, um, you suffer from a level of identity crisis because you're fighting between being being Muslim and being Western and not trying to breach, breach any contrast between the two, which is impossible because they're, they are an oxymoron by nature. Being Western and being a Muslim is an oxymoron. I'll go more into that in another video. What it means to be Western. What it, what does it mean to be Western? I touched on some of it in um, another video that I did. But anyways, yeah, so identity is so important. I realized it, subhanAllah. I, uh, I also watched some of the YouTubers who have gone to Africa, those who are black from the UK, from the islands, from the US, and they see depictions of themselves, images of themselves. And it's so important. It like it they 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 gain something that they didn't know that they needed. They they didn't they 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 didn't know that they actually needed that confidence boost that being in the shadows of a superior culture is a direct onslaught to your person. It erases you. It erases you as an individual. Any culture that comes into the West is ignored. They ignore you, your Asian heritage. They ignore your African heritage. No one cares. And we're not talking about those who give way to, or they like the sample, you know, the music and all of this stuff, but those who know about that kind of thing. They like to sample the African music or even the Arab music or they give you they give you some recognition for your food or something like that. But the dominant culture is the is is you know, you already know what it is. That's the dominant culture. So anyone who falls below that is ignored and you're gonna be forced to compromise to com com compromise and um, conform. And you can leave your heritage in the house or back where you came from. Actually, we don't want to know about it. We don't care about it. And that's terrible. And, and unfortunately, you become sick. And many Muslims don't understand that they have become ill. That, that, that makes you mentally ill when you're in that kind of environment. And you bring those illnesses out with you to the Muslim country. Because essentially, they told you... You don't matter. So then when you leave the, those countries and you come to other Muslim countries where there are your fellow uh, ethnic countrymen, you know, that maybe you don't have anything in common with them because, of course, you're Western now. Or what they call you guys, whitewashed. 
you tend to take on the same exact attitude as the people who muted and erased you without you realizing that they were muting and erasing you. So when you come here, if you don't, if you don't break down those walls or recognize that that is what's happened to you, you're going to remain that way, basically like a colonizer mindset. Um, you've been abused, basically. <laughs> you've been abused. And to reach your Islamic potential and actually purify your mind and your soul and your heart and, and become whole, whole in, in a way that you didn't know that you needed to become, then you have to you have to uh, you have to make hijrah in order to do that, so that you can be comfortable in your own skin and not someone else's skin, because that's what you're wearing. You're wearing someone else's skin, not your own. It's become your own, but it's it's not you, because you ha you've had to compromise some things. You have had you had to compromise your identity or your parents' identity or your grandparents' identity. You know, due to them bringing you to that to the West. And um, you had to choose. Basically, you had, you had to choose. That's just inevitably what's gonna happen. So I think that coming here <clears throat> to the Muslim lands, it really helps you heal in a way that people didn't know that they needed to. It helps you gain confidence. As long as you don't come here looking down on the Muslims and deeming them to be backwards, like the Westerners believe that they're backwards. No, they're just different. They're not backwards. Then you'll you'll find your confidence. You'll find your voice. You'll find your strength. I feel extremely confident here. I can go anywhere in this place and wouldn't bat an eye. If a non-Muslim tried any of the things that they tried back home, I, I, I feel so confident to give them exactly what they will be not expecting because I'm on my turf, you understand? If you're a Muslim, this is your turf. You don't have to bend, you don't have to bite your tongue, you don't have to do any of those things. You're on your turf. So, you could put them in their place, you stand your ground, all of those things, <clears throat> just, as the, just as they do on their turf. They don't feel as comfortable doing what they do on their turf as, you, as they do uh, uh, you know, uh, as they would, uh, they don't feel as comfortable doing here what they would do on their turf. Everyone knows that when you're outside of your bounds, you don't act in the same way. So likewise, the Muslim has the ability to spread his wings and gain his identity or regain his identity that he didn't even know he lost by the permission of Allah. So. You guys tell me what you think about that. <clears throat> it's a conversation I would like to get going. Leave a comment in the comment section. And I will see you all in the next video. And remember, Hydra mandate sacrifice. My salam.